Welcome to B News Weekly. I'm Phil Gallagher along with B News Director Rich Hosford, B News reporters Tad Stefanak, John Vias, Chris Flaherty, and Robert Paris, Peter Brown with the weather, Liz Gillespie with sports, and Jolie Atwood with the community calendar. Thank you for joining us. Burlington Public Schools have reported additional cases of COVID-19 among students or staff members in a number of school buildings. Since last week, the school department and the Board of Health have issued statements concerning one case at Francis Wyman Elementary, one at Burlington High School, two at Marshall Simons Middle School, and for the first time, one at Fox Hill Elementary School. The two cases at Marshall Simons were determined to have been in the building during the infectious period, so no extra precautions had to be taken. They were not during that period. In the other schools, anyone determined to have been in close contact with the positive person, defined as anyone within six feet of the affected individual for greater than 10 minutes, was contacted by the Board of Health and required to quarantine. Testing was recommended for all close contacts. However, any close contacts testing negative for COVID-19 must still complete quarantine requirements as issued by the Board of Health. BHS Sid, uh, senior Sydney Hovass has been creating and donating face masks to frontline workers in many communities to help stop the spread of the virus. Beaners reporter Robert Paris met up with her and has this report. With cases on the rise in Massachusetts, many towns and cities are seeing higher risk levels in their communities. One BHS senior, Sydney Hovass, stepped up to the moment and started to create face masks for medical workers and the public to use. She has donated these throughout Massachusetts and other parts of the country since the beginning of the pandemic. So I have a small business where I make scrunchies and hair accessories. So during the height of the pandemic, when I saw that there was a lack of PPE, I decided to research how to make a medical grade mask and I ended up donating them to hospitals. Um, I donated them to local businesses and first responders and also families across the United States. One of the hospitals that I donated to was Anna Jack's Hospital um, in Massachusetts and then I also donated a bunch of them to a hospital in Colorado that one of my friends got me in connection with. Sydney is always willing to help the community in any way possible. I was just very fortunate that I was able to use my ability to sew to help the community. Um, it was very fulfilling to see people like enjoying the masks that I made, but also like being able to be protected. I think that that was really important. Make sure you check out Sydney's website for face mask and other creativities. At the beginning of the pandemic, it was definitely all donations, but now people have started to ask to buy them. So I do um, have an Instagram where I promote some of the masks. And so that's at Three Chic Sisters and then yeah, that's the only place that I'm really... I also have a website, but that's more for my um, scrunchies and other hair accessories. As the pandemic continues, we all need to maintain our social distance and wear a face mask. I just hope that people continue to wear masks um, and just take the pandemic seriously because it is a real issue and we are seeing a spike in cases right now. So just keep wearing masks and keep social distancing in public and try to stay outside as much as possible. From Burlington High School, I'm Robert Paris for B News Weekly. Burlington students who either started full remote or with the hybrid model and were hoping to switch to the other mode will have to wait. Superintendent Eric Conti told the school committee last week that initial plans to allow students to make the switch will be delayed due to the complication of rearranging classes and reassigning teachers. Initially, he said, the plan put out to parents and guardians was that they would switch after the first quarter in early November, but that is now deemed too complicated. Conti said now they are planning on waiting until at least the end of the calendar year. Superintendent Conti also said that at this time, most classes are roughly the same time, but if they allowed switching from one mode to another, that could change. He explained they could end up with some classes with upwards of 27 students and others with only five or six. He did say that if a family had a new and compelling need to make a switch, they can contact the school department to possibly work something out and that they will work with crisis situations on a regular basis and will continue to do so. The Burlington Board of Health 
held a drive through flu clinic with volunteers from the Medical Reserve Corps providing free flu shots for residents driving through the BHS parking lot. B News reporter John Vias was there and has this look. Flu season is here and plenty of residents lined up in the Burlington High School parking lot on Saturday, October 17th to get their flu shots. With the coronavirus remaining a public concern each day, a drive through flu clinic was held at BHS by the Burlington Board of Health, giving patients the chance to get their vaccination without having to leave their vehicle. This is the first time we've done this type of format and there have been some delays as we're trying to, to work through and make sure that everything is as, is as appropriate as it should be. But the general issues are the same. We're making sure that people are healthy for today, that they're able to tolerate the influenza vaccine, and we're helping them get their shot as safely as possible. Uh, we want to make sure that at least we are reducing as much as we can the risk of influenza being a major viral burden um, in the presence of, of what we already know about, about COVID and the current rise that we're seeing in the state of Massachusetts. Today really is an emergency drill, an emergency drill in case we ever had a situation. Could we activate all of these people? We have 50 plus volunteers today and the answer is yes. Volunteers from the Burlington Medical Reserve Corps were on standby. They are working with the Board of Health in giving approximately six to seven hundred hopefully six to seven hundred flu injections today it's my passion to give back to community and this is the best time that i can get to help them especially during this unprecedented times when there is a, so much going on and people are working very differently than we ever imagined and now the flu season is coming up with the corona here it becomes even more important now to get the flu vaccine. The Board of Health is also preparing for when a COVID vaccine comes along, the drive through setup and safety precautions will all be the same with volunteers ready to help the town's residents stay healthy. This in addition is a rehearsal for when we have a COVID vaccine. This is the way we're gonna have to do it. If we get that COVID vaccine during the cold weather, we will be outside. We'll also need to be outside because we can't congregate inside. I ask people, I plead people that please go out and just get the flu vaccine. So protect yourself, protect your family. Because we're taking the precautions that we're taking, I am so hoping that the influenza burden this year for us is going to be less as well because we're doing things like this. But our citizens know what to do. Uh, and they know how to keep themselves and others safe, and I would just implore that we continue to do that, especially as we really dive into the flu season. From the parking lot of Burlington High School, this is John Vias for B News Weekly. Rabbi Susan Abramson was thrown a surprise party on the 36th anniversary of her becoming the temple's spiritual leader and now the longest serving member of the clergy in Burlington. A significant number in Jewish traditions is 36. B News Director Rich Hosford has this report. In early October, Rabbi Susan Abramson of Temple Shalom Emeth arrived at the temple to meet with some members for a food drive, or so she thought. When she pulled into the driveway, the familiar faces were assembled, but it seemed like they had additional plans for the day, a celebration. I came into towards the parking lot, and I saw all these people standing there who I was expecting. Um, so I came in, and all of a sudden everybody started waving at me, and I thought, Okay, they're waving at me because I got here on time for once. I saw in front of my space, there was a huge sign saying happy 36th anniversary. And then I started to see cars with all these balloons and, and, and uh, uh, signs on them, happy anniversary. And then all of a sudden, uh, my son drove up with my mother. And I was like, oh my God, what are they doing here? Uh, so it was, it, was really, it was really a huge surprise, and, and um, uh, I kick myself for not being more suspicious. Rabbi Abramson explains why 36 years is a big milestone in the Jewish tradition. There's a Jewish number called 18 is the, the, the most important Jewish number because 18 stands for the Hebrew word chai, which means life. So often people will do something special when it's somebody's 18th anniversary or some multiple of 18. Um, so double chai, 
uh, double life is, is a very, very significant number in, uh, in Jewish tradition. Rabbi Abramson said that from the first time she met the congregation, she felt at home. When she first arrived, she was treated to coffee and a muffin rather than a more traditional dinner and feels that shows the down-home character of those at the temple. We just clicked uh, immediately. We, we had the, the same uh, low-key personality and, and um, uh, I, th I found a lot of kindness in them and compassion and just very, very nice people. I really felt like this was a group of people who I would really enjoy being with. Rabbi Abramson was the first full-time rabbi at Temple Shalom Emmet, and so when she arrived, she started many new programs, including a confirmation class, a youth group, a Temple Tots program, and more. Some of the early participants in the youth programs now have children of their own at the temple. Some of the children in that Temple Tots group, um, I bar about mitzvah, I, I confirm them, um, I've officiated at some of their weddings, um, and I still have pictures of them at their weddings. I can look back and see them when they, when they were one or two years old, and, and uh, some of them I've, I've officiated at the baby naming of their children. Um, so some of the children, some of the, the, the babies who I named, I am now naming their babies. Uh, so that, that's, that's really, really special. Finally, Rabbi Ibramson has spent a lot of her time engaged in social justice issues, including anti-hate and anti-violence vigils, Black Lives Matter gatherings, and multiple actions for immigration reform and immigrant rights. She says standing up for the oppressed is an important part of her faith, something that was important to her for, at an early age from her own rabbi. We, we went on many marches together uh, for many different social justice issues, so that, that just came to be something that, that was in my blood and I found it very natural and very easy to do. Like it's so easy to stand up for, for other people and people's rights and, and it's part of my core Jewish values. Uh, do not stand idle while your neighbor bleeds is, is one of the most important ones for me. And all of those Jewish values uh, are take very, very seriously and, and it's up to us to be, as we say, a light to the nations to try to inspire society to live up to those those values which are common for us in all all different religions. From Temple Shalom Emmet, I'm B News Director Rich Hosford. Burlington's two Catholic churches are now under a new parish with a new name. At the beginning of October, the Burlington Catholic Collaborative announced that the name of the new parish overseeing St. Malachy's and St. Margaret's churches is now named St. Veronica's Parish. Father James Mahoney said each church will retain its name but the umbrella organization that runs both, the parish, will bear the new name. Father Mahoney said the name was chosen by vote. They asked parishioners to submit names for the combined parish and received about 50 submissions. Those were whittled down to a final seven that were then voted on through an online and phone poll. Father Mahoney said that the name is fitting because St. Veronica is known as the compassionate saint, reflecting the work of Burlington's Catholic parish. St. Veronica is known as the woman who offered a cloth to Jesus so he could wipe his face on the way to crucifixion. He said acts of kindness have been the mission of both St. Malachy's and St. Margaret's since they were founded. He points to their charity work, including supporting people helping people, the sock exchange in Boston, supplying meals for the Lazarus ho Lazarus House in uh, ministries in Lawrence, providing baked goods for the Lowell Homeless Shelter, supporting the Heartbeat Organization, and supporting the soup kitchen Cor Unum, among other acts. Finally, the merging of the two parishes into one is a way to streamline church administration. Father Mahoney said each parish must have its own council so that they can now have one in town instead of two, and the creation of the new organization will help with other administrative matters. Halloween is next week, and there are some questions about how to celebrate the holiday safely uh, during the pandemic. B News Director Rich Hosford has advice from the Board of Health Chairman, Dr. Ed Weiner, and a look at a holiday display that can be viewed safely from inside your car that is also an opportunity to support an important fundraiser. Halloween. Halloween is fast approaching. There are a lot of questions about how to celebrate the candy and ghost field holiday in a safe way. The town has not made any official announcement canceling trick-or-treating, but is encouraging people to be safe and avoid crowds. Board of Health Chair Ed Weiner explains some of the lingering questions about the holiday. Halloween is a very, very popular holiday. It's a wonderful holiday for children and even adults. But we have to be very careful in this pandemic. We want to avoid crowds. 
we want to social distance, we want to use masks. But this particular season, we've got to be very careful. Parents have to decide whether they want to send their kids from house to house. Don't know whether even if you do go house to house, do you want to touch the candy that came out of someone else's residence? That's a decision, and that's something you have to be very careful about. People who are in houses have to decide whether they want to let kids in or even open the door or leave their candy outside. Dr. Weiner said the state is currently in an uptick of COVID-19 cases and that the Board of Health firmly requests that people do not have parties or congregate in crowds of any kind. He suggests more virtual events and family activities. I suggest do something, do something innovative. I suggest that they do something remote. I suggest that they celebrate with their kids, have their costumes, let them put their costumes on, let them get on Zoom or get on any of those type of media and call all their friends and all of their family members. One attraction that can be viewed safely outdoors or even from the comfort of your car is the Cooper family's Halloween display at 32 Arthur Woods Avenue. While there, you can give back by making a donation to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. The display was created in honor of the family's late husband and father who loved the holiday. First off, when we started it, um you know, it's been a really bad year with COVID and we want to try to uplift everyone's spirits. So we usually have some decorations in the yard and we felt like we wanted to put a little more, put a little smiles on everyone's faces. And then, you know, we got to thinking and um, my husband who passed, Gavin Cooper, um, he was a survivor of childhood cancer and was in remission for a lot of years. Um, he just passed two years ago, St. Jude's. You know, it was a really great organization that really helps for research with kids with childhood cancer. So um, he was followed by Dana Farber growing up and, you know, all the institutions that helped to get the research for that. So we thought it would be really good to honor him that way. The display is impressive, but took quite a bit of effort to create. Yeah, definitely a lot of work, um, lots of wind and rain. So having to readjust everything and the solar lights, um, the kids really helped out. Um, you know, putting everything together with me and helping out every night, shutting down the display and turning it on again and making sure everything's straight. Finally, Melanie said she is happy to see the display bringing people joy in what has been a difficult year. Yeah, we've had quite a few people. We've raised, um, we've raised some money and yeah, it's great to see everybody smiling and taking pictures. Some people get out of cars and take pictures with the, the inflatables and it's really nice to see that it's making people smile. There are other COVID safe Halloween activities happening this year. You can find a list of Halloween events happening in Burlington on our website at bcattv.org slash bnews. From the haunted happenings on Arthur Woods Ave, I'm B News Director Rich Hosford. With the Burlington Public Library not yet open to the public, they're popping up and bringing materials for all ages outside every Friday for patrons to peruse. B News reporter Tad Stefanak went to check, a, uh, check one of these pop-ups out and has this look. In an effort to accommodate more patrons, the Burlington Public Library is popping up. This is a pop-up library, so we are bringing our new materials, adult materials and youth materials and tea materials outside every Friday afternoon from 3 to 5, weather permitting. So we bring out our tables, we bring out our books and AV materials and our American Girl dolls and everything we can round up and we invite people to come down with their library card and check materials out. We are six feet apart with all of our tables. We're outside. We require you to wear masks. We have hand sanitizer. There's no access to the building, so unfortunately there's no restroom access, but you're just here quick in and out, choosing what you'd like to borrow. Gives you access to some of our new stuff because we know patrons are dying to see what's coming in. It's one step above curbside before we can actually open to the public. And today we've just started and we've had a few families already, so it's going really well. We're really excited about it. We'd like you to come. We'd like to know what specific things you'd like. We are ordering materials all the time. The staff is in the building working every day. So if there's anything you'd like to see, let us know. We're happy to be here. We're happy to be outside. We're happy to see our patrons. We miss you guys and we just want people to come. We have kids running around here right now and it's, it's perfect. From the Burlington Public Library, Pop-Up Library.
I'm Bean News reporter Tad Stefanak. Park and Recreation's Trucktober has become one of their most popular annual events since its debut in 2017. This year, in the spirit of adapting to new normal, Trucktober came back looking different than it has in the past. B News reporter Chris Flaherty has this report. Since it was introduced in 2017 as a special event for their 50th anniversary, Trucktober has become a regular staple of Parks and Recreation's calendar that residents look forward to each fall. On Saturday, October 17th, Trucktober returned with a new look. We knew we couldn't do it in the same way as we have always done it, but we figured out a way that could keep everyone safe and still give the trucks some business and whatnot, so we are excited to be able to bring it back. To reflect the times, Parks and Rec made significant changes to ensure residents were able to stay safe while enjoying the event. We're really encouraging pre-ordering, um, and then also we're spreading it out. We're only having a couple trucks at different parks at different times, so hopefully that limits the crowd size. If the turnout was any indication, residents were ready to get outside and enjoy some good food. It's busier than even I expected. A lot of people are excited about the two trucks we have here, the Whoopi Wagon and Cousins Main Lobster, are pretty popular trucks. So it's college football day. I hope people come get lunch and then, you know, just hang out with the family and eat. Stay tuned to BCAP for our full coverage of Trucktober 2020, hosted by Jolie Atwood and yours truly. Until next time, this is Chris Flaherty for B News Weekly. A pair of Burlington residents who work for a technology company are volunteering to help students in town with science, technology, engineering, and math. According to a release from Burlington Public Schools, two Burlington parents who are consultants with CGI, a global IT and business consulting services firm with a local presence, are making a difference in helping 50 Burlington High School students see themselves in STEM during Massachusetts STEM Week. The CGI volunteers are guiding students in creating career vision boards using code. The students are part of the school's CS Pathway, which provides students with career connections and opportunities to create, collaborate, and communicate using computer science. The BHS Red Devils continued their altered fall sports season with a fresh batch of games and matches. We go now to B News Sports reporter Liz Gillespie for this week's sports report. Hey everyone, I'm Liz Gillespie for your weekly sports report. It was a busy weekend for all the VHS fall sports teams, so let's get to it. On Wednesday, October 14th, the Red Devil golf team traveled to the Bear Hill Co Golf Course in Stoneham for a matchup with the Spartans. The boys won by two points in the meet 37 to 35. Then on Friday, October 16th, they faced the Spartans again at the Borica Country Club and won it with a big final score of 47 to 25. On Monday, October 19th, they headed to Wakefield to take on the Warriors. The team's winning streak evaporated as they got beat by the Warriors 43-29. to They will face Wakefield again on Friday, October 24th at the Bill Ricca Country Club. The boys currently stand at 4-3 on the season. Girls field hockey also played the Spartans in Stoneham on Saturday, October 17th. The girls won by a score of 2-1. Goals were made by junior Anna Otis, assisted by junior Brooke Bibbo, and junior Fiona Noon, assisted by junior Bella Floyd. The Lady Devils moved to 2-2 two two on the season, and they'll face the Watertown Red Raiders on Saturday, October 24th at Victory Field. Boys soccer was supposed to play the Stone and Spartans on Saturday, October 17th, but it was canceled the day of. The Red Devils will play the Watertown Red Raiders on Saturday, October 24th at the Marshall Simons Middle School Brush Field. This will be live streamed on our BCAT Facebook page at 9 a.m. Burlington's record will remain at 1 and 2 until they get back on the field. Lady Devil Soccer headed to Stoneham to face the Spartans in a win they desperately needed. However, the team was unable to score any points on the offense. Another loss came for Burlington in a 3-0 defeat. The Lady Devils dropped to 0 and 4 on the season and they will head to Victory Field on Saturday, October 24th to face the Watertown Red Raiders. Girls Cross Country headed to Colonial Park in Stoneham to take on the Spartans on Saturday, October 17th. The girls ended up losing in a close meet with a score of 24 to 31. The team drops to 0 and 2 and will head to Watertown High School to take on the Red Raiders on Saturday, October 24th. Boys Cross Country also took on the Spartans on Saturday at Varsity Field and B News sports reporter Robert Paris was there. So let's check that out. It was a beautiful fall afternoon for the Red Devils cross country team 
as they faced off against the Stoneham Spartans at Varsity Field. As a result, Burlington ended up winning against the Spartans 18 to 43. You know, today we, our goal is to at least go one through three and we had that. Stoneham has two really good quality runners. After that, there's certainly a drop off for them. Um, James Johnson just took it easy today to help Patrick Gray, who's a sophomore, pace him through the course. Um, so James was first, Patrick and Rathik, both sophomores were second and third, so I'm pretty happy with that result. The team is always practicing on and off the track. You know, we put in all of our base mileage at this point, so it's probably two days a week on the track and the other days out in the roads and um, just getting ready for the big meets. No matter who they verse against, the Red Devils are getting ready for the next opponent. Uh, everything's about getting ready for Wakefield. Um, Watertown's next. They're just a very undermanned team, so I probably won't even run my varsity against them. And then uh, Melrose is up next. Melrose is a little bit stronger this year. We'll run a full lineup for them, and then Wakefield. From Varsity Field, I'm Robert Paris for B News Sports. The Red Devils won by a score of 18 to 43. They will face the Watertown Red Raiders on Saturday, October 24th at Varsity Field. The team moves to 2-0 on the season. For more Red Devil action, check out B News Sports Hub page at bcattv.org. And that's all for your weekly sports report. I'm Liz Gillespie. Back to you guys in the studio. We have seen some beautiful fall weather this week. To see if that will continue, we go now to B News weatherman Peter Brown for the latest forecast. We'll also check out the community calendar with Jolie Atwood to see what's happening in Burlington. Well, hello everyone. This is Peter Brown for a look at your weather for the next seven days. Here we are heading into the final days of October. I know it's hard to believe that we're almost into November, but we certainly are moving through fall pretty quickly. Now, starting with our period on Friday, it looks like we're going to see above average temperatures. Again, something we've seen a lot of over the past few months, going back to probably about the May time frame. Temperatures up in the upper 60s, so a pleasant way to start out this period as we head into late October. Now, it looks like the weekend is going to cool off a little bit as we get into the Sunday time frame, but really doesn't look like we have anything in terms of too much big storms coming at us. Looks like we might have a little bit more drought relief when we get towards the middle of the week. And as we round out our period, getting into the Thursday time frame, look at this. Our average highs at this time of year should only be in the mid-50s, and that is pretty much where we're going to be when we get there. Definitely cooling down as we head towards the end of next week. Now, as we go ahead, let's take a look at what the Climate Prediction Center is calling for us in terms of temperatures and precipitation over the next seven days. Now, again, temperatures, not too much of a surprise. Looks like we're going to be at or a little bit above average or a good chance of that for the next seven days, and that's going to be reflected when we see the seven day in a couple of moments. Now, as we go ahead, let's take a look at the next graphic, and this, again, is good news. Looks like we're expecting above average precipitation here in the Burlington area, so it looks like we're going to continue to chip away at that severe drought that we're still in, but hey, that is great news. Any rain is welcome right now at this time of the year, especially after what we've gone through over the past summer. And as we go ahead, let's take a look at that nice weather that we have coming up for the next seven days. And again, starting out your weekend, getting into the Friday and Saturday time frame, looks like it's going to be pretty pleasant out there. Mostly sunny skies and temperatures in the upper 60s, so really great. It's going to be, of course, a little bit chilly if you're heading out at night, but that's to be expected at this time of the year pretty much average and actually our low temperatures over this weekend are going to be above average for this time of the year in the 40s so that's nice getting into Sunday of course we're going to see a little bit of a slide in our temperatures back to about seasonable levels down in the upper 50s and again we introduce that chance of some rain maybe Monday and Tuesday might give us another half an inch of rain or so so that's something to really look forward to out there especially for anyone who has any drought starved late season plants out there now, as we get, again, as we get into the end of the week, looks like we're going to see our temperatures starting to trend downwards after we have some nice weather in the 60s. We're going to see a return to the 50s as we get into Wednesday and Thursday. So definitely make sure you're bundled up if you're going out because it's going to be a little bit cool and a little bit breezy out there. So everyone, have a great week and enjoy the weather. Get ready to enjoy some Red Devil classics. Until Burlington football returns, we'll be showcasing some of the Red Devil's greatest hits from past seasons. Featuring post-game analysis from former voice of the Red Devils, Phil Accaro. We have a full season of Red Devil classics coming your way. Look for new games weekly on BCAT's education channel. 
Hi, I'm Julie Atwood, and this is your community calendar. Stop by and get a slice of pizza for a good cause. On Tuesday, October 27th from 5 to 9 p.m., the BHS Interact Club will be having a fundraiser at the Flatbread Pizza in Bedford at 213 Burlington Road. Money raised will be donated to the Yemen Aid Project. Everyone is welcome to attend the event. Getting hungry for some sweet treats? On Thursday, October 29th at 4 p.m., the Burlington Public Library will be having an event called Spooky Snacks. Learn how to make easy-to-prepare Halloween snacks for kids and families. Everyone is welcome to join virtually. The event will be live on the BPL Facebook page. Put on your costume and get ready to say boo! On Saturday, October 31st, Wayside will be having a Halloween event for kids. Pre-registration is required and open from children's ages 1 to 12. Time slots are from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 3 to 5 p.m. For more information and to register, go to Shop Wayside. I'm Julie Atwood, and that was your community calendar. Another week, another photo to highlight. This week's photo shows autumn in all its glory. It was sent in by Vishad Nigam and captures leaves falling from a maple tree onto his daughter Ivana as she takes in the fall scenery. One leaf in particular was wonderfully captured at mid-descent. Thanks for the photo, Vishad. We'd like to see your photos. They could be of your fall activities, a family trip, or just everyday moments, whatever you think is interesting and would want to share with us in the community. Email your photos to bcat at bcattv.org with the subject line, Photo of the Week. Okay, that's it from the news desk here at B News Weekly. I'm Phil Gallagher, along with Rich Hosford, Tad Stefanak, John Vias, Chris Flaherty, Robert Paris, Julie Atwood, and Peter Brown. Thank you for joining us.